In this grade 12 mathematical literacy video, we are looking at the September preparatory paper 1 exam scope. So we are going to go through the entire exam scope, the topics that are going to be included in your paper 1, but most importantly, what to study under every single one of those topics. Together with this video, there is a how to study math literacy video that I have already uploaded, and I think that it will be beneficial for you to watch it too to help with exam strategy. Before we get into the scope, I wanted to remind you that we have the cheat sheets for mathematical literacy paper 1 and paper 2 and essentially what they are, they are more of a detailed scope than this video. So in addition to this video, if you want a more detailed scope, that's what the cheat sheets are for, for both the preparatory examination as well as the final examination. So it will apply to both. Email me to place your order and for the price quotation. And one last thing, we also have virtual classes to help you prepare for the current preliminary examinations for the mathematical literacy paper one we are going to be having our session on the 4th of September that is the day before you have to write your paper one and for the paper two it will be the day before the paper two so that session is going to be on the 7th of September both of them are going to be at 7 o'clock all you have to do is email me for the price and booking The first topic on your scope is the topic of finance. With finance, it's usually what you will find in question two of your paper, but there will also be a bit of it in question one of your paper. So your paper is going to have question one that is going to be based on the basics of the topics that fall under your paper one scope. So finance will be some of those uh, level one 20 percent questions that you will find in your question one as basic questions and then you will find a deeper question on finance in question two of your question paper under it you have to make sure that you are comfortable with reading your financial documents meaning that you are able to identify things that are on your your financial documents which will be usually given to you as an addendum then you also have to get comfortable with your calculation of taxable income as well as value added tax value added tax is not going to be that much of it but it's usually few and far in between questions you just have to get comfortable with them lest you lose marks on something that is meant to be easy so with value added tax make sure that you are comfortable with your fractions of when the vet is exclusive and when it is inclusive then we get to the issue of tariff systems this is one of the more challenging questions in finance together with taxable income so make sure that you give enough time to both of these topics when you are practicing them then we get to profit cost as well as selling price those ones usually you can get away with general knowledge if you know what you were doing what i would also advise when it comes to these ones is that you know how to deal with percentages because sometimes we're not looking for a profit but rather a profit margin so that is the profit converted into a percentage then end with loan investments as well as interest The second topic that you'll find on your scope is going to be the topic of data handling, which you will find in question three of your question paper, but there will be basics of it that you can find in question one as well. Remember, question one is the question the question that has all of the basic questions on data handling. You will find them in question one, and then we will get deeper into data handling when it comes to question three of your question paper. Now, when you're studying your you when you're studying rather your data handling, what are the things that you need to make sure that you are comfortable with before you get into the exam room the first of it is summarizing data your ability to summarize data what are we looking for to summarize data these are the things that we look into which are the calculation of your mean your mode your median you have to also be able to identify from your data what is the maximum what is the minimum value as well as calculating the range knowing that the formula to calculate the range is simply just the maximum minus the minimum but you would have to be able to identify those before you can get the range 
same thing kind of applies when we're dealing with an interquartile range you have to be comfortable with your lower quartile and your upper quartile be able to identify them especially even in a box and whisker plot so in a best box and whisker plot you have to be able to interpret the box and whisker plot be able to identify what is the minimum the maximum the lower quartile the upper quartile and as well as the secondary quartile which is same thing as the median and from those calculations you will be also able to determine the interquartile range and then you also have to know the difference between your numeric as well as your discrete data so you have to know by just looking at your data are you dealing with a numeric data or are you dealing with discrete data The last topic on your scope is an integrated topic, which is the topic of probabilities. Now, with probabilities, you will mostly find it in your question 4 and your question 5. It will be integrated with the finance topic as well as the data handling topic. So, in one of them, it will be probability with a heavy emphasis on finance or a probability with a heavy fin uh, emphasis on data handling between your question four and your question five so just know that it will be a question that will not stand alone but it will be mixed with those topics so under the topic of probabilities itself what are the things that you need to be able to be comfortable with before you walk into the exam room the first thing is the calculation of a probability of events it comes with a formula so you also you at basic you have to know the formula for probability of an event if you are looking for a favorable outcome so what is the probability of something actually happening there is also the way you calculate it when you are looking for a probability of an event not taking place so that's what we mean that the event is not happening that's an event that's not taking place then we also have compound events so this is where we have now two events taking place so what is the probability of two events taking place all of those there's a way that you need to be able to calculate them so make sure that you are comfortable with that and then you will end off with understanding your tree diagrams and being able to complete one so usually in the question paper what happens with a tree diagram is that they will give you an incomplete one so you have to be able to complete that tree diagram and then also be able to answer questions based on that tree diagram I have youtube recommend you more of my videos be sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below